Hi guys, it's Savannah from Crocheting Savvy and welcome back to my channel. Alright, so you guys know it's summer, right? Well, one of my favorite things ever is earrings. And last summer I learned you can... Ivy, you're distracting me on the camera, baby. You can make your own crochet earrings. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So last summer, I designed these gorgeous earrings right here. Um, I have some others right here. And I have published these as a free pattern on Ribbler and my blog. And these are the Sunburst Crochet Earrings. Now, I'm going to show you today how to make these gorgeous earrings. So, what you're going to need... One second. Georgie is also back there, just chilling. What you're going to need for these earrings are crochet lace thread and your favorite color. This is so much lace thread and these little, um, I guess they're cones. They don't look like cones, these ones, but there are some that actually are on cones. But this is like 800 yards of thread. You're also going to need a two millimeter crochet hook. I don't know which brand this is. I've had it for years and this is like the only thing I've used it for. You're also going to need some teardrop hoops. It doesn't matter what size. This pattern works for um, small, medium, large. I've not tried it with extra large, but you can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's on Amazon. You can get them in large packs for pretty cheap. Your little fishtail attachments to actually be able to wear them. I don't remember if they're called fishtail attachments. I lost the thing for them. And super glue. This is to attach the yarn to itself so it does not unravel while you're wearing it. But these are great for craft shows, gifts, yourself, and you can make them in whatever color you want. So I'm going to show you how to make them today, okay? It's a really short pattern and it's really simple once you get the hang of it. So I will meet you guys down below. Alright, I'm going to start out without the teardrop hoop and I've already made my slip knot. So we're going to put it on the hook. And we are going to start out by chaining nine. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit since this is so small. There we go. One. Two. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And now this second chain from the hook right here we are going to place a half double crochet and then we are going to half double crochet across 
The hardest thing about using this lace thread and the small hook is that they are both so small. When you're first starting to use it, it's really fiddly. And sometimes it's really hard to tell if the chain is facing the right way. Okay, I am right here at the last half double crochet of our starting row. And there we go. Now we should have eight stitches. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to turn it. Chain one. I don't need that tail right there caught the tail, not even the working yarn. Got tangled up, y'all. It's the thing with the lace yarn. I get the lace yarn confused so much more than I ever do regular yarn. This isn't even considered yarn, it's thread. Alright, yeah, I do have a chain one there. So turn it, and we are going to half a double crochet slip stitch in each one. So that is a yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then pull that through both loops on your hook. All right, I'm gonna show that to y'all again. And if I seem extra slow, one, it's lace, so it's really tiny. And two, if you can see right here, I need to sand down this hook because Ivy has gotten a hold of it and chewed on it. It's still intact. There are just divots from her teeth in it. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through the loops on your hook. Let's see if I can keep that in frame this time. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, pull through both loops on your hook. And one more time, yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, pull through both loops on your hook. Let's totally mess that up, why don't we? <laughs> and let's try that again. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull through, Pull through one loop, there we go. Alright, we'll do that for four more stitches.
Okay, I have finished the second row, and what we have here is going to be this middle part of the teardrop right here. So now we need our teardrop shape, and we are going to chain one. Do not turn your work. Go ahead and insert your hook into the side of these two rows. Grab your teardrop. Put your hook right under it like this. Hold on to it. Wrap your yarn You want to get it to where the yarn is not being hindered by the shape. Wrap your yarn around your hook and pull it up like this. Pull the thread through and single crochet. And now we are going to work into the bottom of our starting chain around the shape. So this is how we are attaching the thread to the shape. Here's another. And what I do is about this point, I grab the tail and I will do my best to bring it behind what I'm working on. So that, as I insert my hook and pull the yarn up, I am also working around that tail so that it is also securing it. Alright. Here is single crochet six here is seven the tail to make sure it's nice and tight. Alright, we should end up with 13 single crochets between working through the bottom of all of the chain and working the sides to secure it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and meet y'all back here in a second. Alright, here is what we have so far. Now, after we work all around attaching the thread to the hook, to the shape, we are going to turn, chain one, and then extended single crochet, so we inserted our hook, pulled up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, chain one, and do the exact same thing in this next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, 
chain one We are going to do this exact same thing all the way to the end, and I will meet y'all there for the very last stitch. All right, I've worked my way around and I've done the extended single crochet and chain one right before this last stitch here. Now what we are going to do is just place an extended single crochet turn chain one and in this chain one space between the extended single crochets we are going to place a single crochet chain four one two three four and then the second chain from the hook single crochet three times one Two, three, and then single crochet back into the chain space. And then we go to the next chain space and do the exact same thing after I pull off more thread. So single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four, three single crochet in the second chain from the hook. If I can get it in. There we go. One. Two. three, single crochet, and next chain space, repeat it all again. Okay, I'm going to let y'all do that and I will meet y'all back at the end over here. All right, I've made it back around, and after we finish this last one right here, we are going to finish by single crocheting in this very last stitch. All right. Now we are going to cut the yarn. And we don't need to leave too long of a tail since we're not actually weaving any of it in. But pull up. And now turn it to the back. And this is where the super glue comes in. 
Here's hoping that super glue actually is still good. Push it down. Hope it bright sticks. <laughs> this is honestly the worst part to me because I always end up gluing my fingers together. And then I also do this tail because even though I worked over it, I still don't want it coming loose. And then you leave it to dry and set and then once that is done and it's all dry then you can cut off the excess ends and put on the hook okay and then just repeat all of that for a second one and then you've got yourself a pair of earrings all right, there you have it. Here is your tutorial for the sunburst crochet earrings. I hope you enjoyed it, and I would love to hear any of your questions or comments below in the comment section. As always, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Crocheting Savvy, and my blog, CrocheteringSavvy.com. I also have an Etsy shop where a few of these are up for sale, and you can find more of my patterns on Ribbler and Ravelry. I hope to see y'all next time. Until then, happy crocheting!